oh Lord, what a great day that'll be when we stand in your presence and the faith that we have in you becomes a view of who you are. Lord, and we get to meet our Savior face to face. Lord, I long for that day. Lord, I long for the day when sin is no longer a problem. God, thank you for sending your son to die for us so that day can be can be coming for those who put our trust in you. Lord, in your name, amen. Hi, thank you for being here today. Um, there are men in the front with Bibles, and they'd love to get one in your hand if you don't have one. So raise your hand, and they'll be handing them out. If you don't own a Bible, um, that is our gift to you to keep. So thank you. Um, this is the time in the service where we're preparing our hearts for the Lord's Supper. And so in a minute, men will bring a cracker that represents the body of Christ and bring a little cup of juice that represents his blood that was spilt for us. And we want to spend time remembering that, remembering him and remembering what Christ did on the cross. Um, to do that today, we're going to look at Luke chapter 3. So go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. And as you're turning there, let me remind you a little bit of the context. Verse 3 of chapter 3 tells us that John the Baptist was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He was fulfilling the prophecy from Isaiah 40 and was making ready the way of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And later in chapter 3, three groups of people are singled out in the audience. There's the Jewish crowds, there's tax collectors, and there's some soldiers. Among this crowd, there were many going out to be baptized, and John had an exhortation for them. I want to pick up there and look closely at that exhortation. So read with me in Luke chapter 3, starting in verse 7. So he began saying to the crowds who were going to, out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath of God? Therefore, bring fruits in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you, from these stones, God is able to raise up children to Abraham. Indeed, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees, so every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, Then what shall we do? And he would answer and say to them, The man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and he who had food is to do likewise. And some tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what you have been ordered, and order to and some soldiers were questioning him saying well what about us what should we do and he said to them do not take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages john's exhortation was simple if you want to make a declaration of your repentance you need to bear fruits in keeping with repentance the greek word for in keeping with here is a picture of a scale or a weight it's a tool for evaluation to bring fruit in keeping with repentance, you need your fruit to show the value and strength of your repentance. The problem here is that the second half of verse 8 tells us that John recognized that this specific audience was relying on their heritage for their salvation. They were going about it all wrong. So John was exhorting the crowds to look at their life, not their heritage. John sandwiched this imperative or command between two very strongly worded accusations. He called them a brood of vipers. A brood is a family or group, and the vipers here is referring to those that are poisonous or destructive. In this context, he's saying you are a group that are destructively opposed to the things of God, specifically the gospel of repentance. He then closes the exhortation by reminding them that God's judgment is near, inferring that if they kept on their current path, they would be judged and it would not go well for them. This tells us the extreme importance of an authentic profession marked by fruit. What I love about this passage is that the crowds didn't argue with the exhortation. They just sought clarification. So John gave three groups of people three examples of fruit. Group one was the crowd. Let's look again at verses 10 and 11. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, then what should we do? And he would answer and say to them, the man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And he who has food is to do likewise. Basically, he told the crowd, 
to give selflessly. Group two were the tax collectors. And in verses 12 and 13, he says, it says, and some tax collectors also came to be baptized. And they said, teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, collect no more than what you have been ordered to. He told the tax collectors to not cheat the system. And then finally, group three was the soldiers. And in verse 14, some soldiers were questioning him saying, and what about us? What should we do? And he said, do not take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely and be content with your wages. He told the soldiers to treat people with kindness and to be content. His examples of fruit recognized the world's actions within their current roles and gave them instructions that showed a heart changed by God. He hit people exactly where they were and gave them a clear way to know that they were bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. So as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, what can we learn from this today? Christian, I want to speak to you first. Examine your life this week. Look at the fruit in your life that shows a life marked by repentance. And praise God. Because you once had a life that was unable to repent. You were opposed to him, and now you bear fruits. What a glorious thing that is. What a great time of worship. Also, examine areas that need repentance and confess those sins, turn from them, and take communion. But there's another group here. There are some here that do not bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Maybe you are here because you've always been part of a church and you feel comfortable here. Maybe in a way, you're looking at your heritage. Maybe you're just here because a friend or family member brought you. I ask you to examine your life. Does your life bear fruit in keeping with repentance? If not, I want to tell you the same thing that John told the crowds. God's judgment is near. Repent. If you are honest and examine your life, you need a savior. So confess and repent. This passage marked the beginning of Jesus' ministry that ended with him on a cross dying for sinners just like you. If you repent and you put your faith and trust in him, you too can be saved. See, the story ended well for those crowds. If you look at verse 21, it goes on to say, now when all the people were baptized, they were not in a hopeless situation and neither are you. Repent and bear fruit. However, if you do not do that during communion this morning, please let the cup and bread pass by. As this time of communion is for those, of, it's a time of worship for those who have put their trust in Jesus. And if you have questions, please see me or any of the elders or anyone on stage or the person that brought you. Just seek someone to help answer your questions so that you can um, turn and repent and have a savior. Men, can you please serve us and you can take communion on your own this morning.